Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited to show you that we finally have Warhammer 3 running on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider scrolling down and pressing the subscribe button and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So Warhammer 3 is definitely one of the most exciting releases for macOS. It's probably the only AAA game that's come out in the last few months, certainly the first one of 2022. And what's interesting about this port is that it is an Apple Silicon only port. So Intel Macs are not supported. However, one of the curious things about it is that this is still an Intel binary. And so we're still gonna be running this through the Rosetta to translation there so that it can work on the M1 ARM chip. And Feral Interactive, who are responsible for the Mac port, are saying that some online multiplayer libraries are not natively compatible with Apple Silicon. So therefore they've had to release a Rosetta 2 version instead. And what we've discovered as well is that it's actually possible to get this game to actually open on an Intel Mac. And all you have to do is to delete a couple of files within the application bundle, and then you'll be able to launch it on an Intel Mac. However, Feral are stating that this particular method is not supported and they're gonna be adding Intel and AMD graphics support in the future. But what we really care about is how this game performs on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So today I'm going to be testing on my M1 MacBook Air 2020 and also comparing the performance with my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Make sure to watch until the end of the video. I'm going to show you how to fix the 30 FPS cap on this game. So the first test we're going to do is a comparison between the low, medium and high detail settings at 1080p running on the original MacBook Air 2020 with the M1 chip. So there is an ultra detail setting, but it wasn't really coping well with high. So I decided not to test that one. So as you can see, the game runs as a bit of a slideshow. And this is kind of expected given this is a AAA game being released in 2022. And this is an older M1 chip first released in 2020 and we're still using the Rosetta 2 translation layer. However, it's a little bit disappointing that we can't quite hit that stable 30 FPS. Thankfully, Feral have included a way of dramatically improving frame rates using AMD FSR. So FSR stands for Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and it's a way of upscaling a game if you run it at a lower resolution. So instead of trying to run the game at 1080p, where it barely hits 30 FPS at low settings, we can run a scaled resolution at say 50% of 1080p, and we can use sharpening in order to make the image less blurry. And this is going to be less expensive than trying to run it at 1080p and we're going to get much better frame rates. And one advantage is that the game can still run at 50% resolution while the interface can remain crisp and all the text still legible at 100% resolution. So my testing, I've tried to compare FSR off versus FSR on. So we're running this at 1080p at 50% resolution scale. And I do struggle a little bit to see what the difference is exactly. However, if you do pause the video and look at some of the actual detail, you're going to see some additional sharpening here and there, especially in detailed areas like trees and units, etc. So what I'd say is that you can run Warhammer 3 on the base M1 Mac. However, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of visual fidelity in order to hit that 60 FPS mark. If you upgraded to say the M1 Pro chip or the M1 Max or M1 Ultra, you're gonna get much better GPU performance too. Here I'm comparing the original M1 chip against the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores. And you can basically see that the M1 Max is around four times faster than the base M1. And that's probably down to the increase of four times the number of GPU cores. And the M1 Max can easily hit 60 frames per second running at 1440p at medium settings. So a Mac with more GPU cores is obviously going to run better. And this comes at a price as the M1 Max is literally four times more expensive than the base M1 chip. So one interesting thing that I discovered is that if you're playing this game on a MacBook and you remove your charger, then you're going to be hit with a 30 FPS cap for some reason. So here I'm just demonstrating, I'm going to pull out the MagSafe and the frame rate is going to drop straight down to 30. And basically, as soon as I plug in the MagSafe back into the computer, it's going to go back into an uncapped frame rate. So this is a really weird choice because on Apple Silicon Macs, if you plug in the charger, it doesn't deliver any more power to the GPU. So it shouldn't really make a difference whether you're plugged in or not. And I understand that if you don't have the charger plugged in, you might want to save power, but it really should be the user's choice about whether you want to be able to cap your frame rate or not. Sometimes you just want to get the maximum performance, even though you're running this off a battery. So as you can see, the performance on the M1 Mac is just about okay. If you can afford to go with a higher end chip like the M1 Pro or the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra, then you're obviously gonna get better performance at the cost of higher price. 
And what's interesting is that this is not really optimized for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. I think what Feral have done is that they've decided to target the M1 chip and say, we only support this line of chipsets. And that's probably because they're having more difficulty supporting the broader range of chipsets from Intel CPUs to AMD GPUs. And they've decided to drop support for Nvidia GPUs entirely. So this is not quite the native AAA M1 port that we were hoping for. And it's interesting to see that one of the big benefits of having an M1 chip is that you can target all your resources to supporting one line of chipsets. It becomes more and more likely that any future Total War game or any other AAA release that comes to the Mac is going to be native ARM. So if you want to be able to buy Warhammer 3 then please check out the link in the description. You can get it cheaper from Games Planet and if you click the affiliate link and make a purchase then you'll be helping to support this channel. Anyway I hope you found this video useful. If you did please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.